Welcome to the League of Kings podcast. Meet your hosts, Willie, J. Dot, Big Brother, and Joe. Join these four distinct voices in insightful discussions about society and culture. Get ready for captivating content, camaraderie, and guaranteed laughter. Sit back, enjoy the show, and remember to like, share, and subscribe for an exciting journey ahead. Kings and Queens, welcome back to the League of Kings podcast. I am your host, Willie, the habitual line stepper. And as usual, I am joined by some dope individuals. Resident Big Brother, how you doing, King? I'm doing real good. I'm ready to jump into the episode. Glad to be here. So I got random questions for everybody as I as I'm bringing everybody in. Just random questions. Uh oh. So for you, big brother, since you're the oldest and the wisest of everybody here, at what age is it okay for a man to cross his legs when he sit down? Am I the oldest? I'm not sure I'm the oldest, but uh, cross his legs at any age. Any age? Okay. I'll, I'll just wonder. So like, like I said, I feel like. I get the vibe that you the more mature one here. Yeah, we'll give him we'll give him more mature. Okay, we'll give him mature. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Dot. Half Flynn, half amazing. How you doing, King? Feeling good, feeling great. How are you? I am good. Hey Jay. You ever have an issue trying to have a conversation with somebody with a lazy eye? Mm. I've talked about this before. Like, I just, I feel like if everybody could just give you the moment to, to you know, to get that, get, get it out your system. I see mm -hmm. it. I see it. Just let me make the comment. Let me make a comment first. I don't mean anything by it. Just let me address it. Let's not pretend like it's not happening. That's all I want. Like, just let's not pretend like it's not happening. We can get that. I can get it out of my system. I'm not sitting here tripping over my words, trying not to say I or something, you know, while I'm talking to you. <laughs> I call it letting the, getting the evil out, but I've heard right. people, people don't like that. But just let, let me let me get that out first, and then we can move on to the conversation. I feel that. I feel that. Joe, how you doing, King? Doing good. How about you, Will? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. So since since you into the whole conspiracy theory thing, uh, did OJ do it? Hmm. I'm not sure, but I now, have. Now, 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 remember, you just recently got the black card, so we just we we just testing the water. That's all we're doing. I I've heard that <laughs> re, uh, after doing a little bit of research, I heard that it was uh, not. No, no, please don't don't quote me and go out there saying that Joe said this. But I've heard uh, some reports that the son actually did it. And he took the blame for the son. Me too. Me too. So we won't say that you said it, but we'll say that we heard it from you. How about that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that works. All right. Hey, y'all, I don't know if y'all realize this, but it's been a year since we've been podcasting and, 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 and fellowshipping with each other. Did, did y'all realize that? No, nah, not till you said it. Not till you. Not till you said it. Yeah, it's been a year, and then here we are, a year later, and got our own show together. Nice, very cool. That's dope. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. dope. That's dope. So, y'all ready? Uh, I got it. Like any memories or any um, outs about that? Before we move on, um, I'm appreciative. Like I would have never st thought at the moment I started um, podcasting my show that like it would bring friendships like ours where you know not only did we you were gracious enough to invite all of us on your show individually then collectively now look at us now we have this amazing new show we are you know always supporting each other and I actually you know actually feel a uh, true friendship connection with with everybody on here and it's like to the point where it's like yo even off air 
I I love the way we joke in our chats and everything like that and check up on each other. So yeah, it's it's crazy that it's been a year. I didn't even think it was that long. Yeah, I want to know. I, I have a confession. It's been a while since I did a confession online. The first time I seen Big Brothers podcast thing, I was like, what kind of narc? shit is this he like intentionally named his show big brother like we was just like pass it up as like oh that's pretty cool the way he did that so it took me kind of it took me a little bit to kind of warm big brother i ain't gonna lie so i was like man he, he's probably trying to like get out my get some information trying to trying to uh sneak his way into the community to get to get information on everybody but <laughs> This so happens that around the same time I, I had met you, I was reading um the spook the spook on the um doorstep or something. It, I can't remember what it was. It's the book. It was about the the black guy that was working for the FBI. Okay, yeah, no he ended up in, infiltrating you know the the um the gangs in New York and uh, Chicago and stuff. So I was like, dude, this is this can't be a coincidence. What about you, uh, J Dot? Man, yeah, I met you first, Willie. And I think I, I I've told you this. Like, uh, I think the our first introduction was like you leaving a comment on one of my shows, and uh, I saw the 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 King stuff, and I was like, oh, here come another one of these these boys. black militants. <laughs> <laughs> but now, but I could tell from your comment that you actually listened to the show, and you had you know constructive things to say, and we you know we kind of struck up a conversation. I think I met. Big Brother next on your show getting roasted for uh, messing up my haircut appointment or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was that was a fun episode. That was a fun episode. And, uh, uh, the book is called The Spook Who Sat By the Door. That's what it is. Mm. That was the book. What about you, you Joe? Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost like, uh, you know, when you start this stuff, you don't, you don't know who you don't know what's going on, right? When you start your show and you don't know who you're going to talk to or who's going to want to talk to you. Or uh, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they don't, they don't want to, they don't want to talk to you. Right. They just kind of want you to stay on your own thing. And, 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 uh, but this was surprising to me, you know, to, uh, you know, it's, you started this whole thing, Will, and uh, all of a sudden we started going into the shows and all this stuff. And it was just, uh, organic. That's, that's how, that's how I'm going to put it. It's just organic the way we all got together and stuff. And, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if I was to go back in time and, and go, yeah, you know, I think we're going to have our own show together, all of us. And it, I would have never, I would have never imagined mm-hmm. that. So uh, I'm glad that it happened the way it happened. You know what I mean? We never pushed it. We never forced anything. It just happened. So yeah, uh, great times. It's definitely all right y'all ready to get into it yeah 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 let's get into it all right big brother how how do you properly deal with co-workers properly deal with co-workers i'm a 90 day guy so everyone has a 90 day probation with me. So I wait to see which part of a personality I see consistently the most. And then, and that night at the end of that 90 days, that's who you are to me. So, and then once doing that, I can kind of look at what kind of box I want to put you in. But at the same time, I always understand like dealing with coworkers, you actually have to put some, each one of them in an individual file and deal with them accordingly. So that's the way I deal with coworkers. So if you, or a gaslighter, I know how to deal with you. If you are an instigator or a gossiper, I know how to deal with you. So it's kind of like I only give anything outside of myself at a job 20% of my personality. As I call it, like you get my not so much ambassador, but my like a public persona. It's authentic, but that's what you get. So I don't really, every coworker has a label and I deal with them accordingly. Mm. The most okay. HR answer I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Jada. I'm gonna get you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Before we go any further, I can see J- I can see Jada's um podcast is doing well. He got a nice gold chain on Jada. 
Bro got to go with Jay. Damn, Jay Dog. The Cuban Link. You got, you got you got an endorsement deal we don't know about. Wait, that did Rudy Zodiac? call you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't be. You know, I'm I'm the bead king. Oh, okay. Uh, what about you, Jay Dog? How how do you deal with your coworkers? I know that you you're in a lead position now. So how how does that work with you? Because you you can't this turn the coworkers like you used to. Yeah, I have to listen to a lot of stuff that I would rather not. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying not to deal with my coworkers if I could. If I could say this, <laughs> body listening, uh, your management doesn't care what's wrong with you when you call in sick. We really don't. We really, all I need to know is you're not coming. I don't, don't tell me the gross story about your stomach or was it's bugs in your I, I don't need to know none of that. I don't want to know none of that. It doesn't matter to me. At the end of the day, you're not going to be, if you got the time, take it. You're not going to be here. That's the bottom line. Like stop telling people all those stories. It's just, it's a waste of my time. I could be doing mm -hmm. something. I could be planning for the day without you, but I'm still here listening to how many times you was on the toilet last night. Like unnecessary. Mm. Mm. Unnecessary. So yeah, I, I would rather not deal with my coworkers, but I'm forced to. Yeah. And I think I've actually talked a couple I told a couple people that at work. Like I don't really want to talk to you, but this is part of my job. So here we are. <laughs> and they was like, Well, we like you though, Willie. And I was like, But I'm telling you, I don't want to talk to you. I mean, this is as far as it's gonna go. But I'm I'm at a crossroads right now, yeah. Because I want to tell my coworkers how I really feel about them. But if I do, then I'm gonna end up in the office talking to HR about what I said. Like I can't I have come to the decision that I feel like Half my coworkers is like on some type of a spectrum. Because of the shit that they say and do. I got a guy, I tell him something and then he repeats it back to me. And then he still does the opposite. And then when I ask him about it, yeah, you right, you right. And then he gives me an explanation of why he didn't do it and then laughs. And then I just stare at him. Like what, what was in, in my mind, I don't drop the N word like 15 times. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? So, so I'm, 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 it's, it, I, I know a lot of it has to do with my patience. I know that I get that, but at the same time, I really want to tell them how I feel about them. What about you, Joe? Yeah, I think um, when I was younger and I was uh, working and uh, coworkers, and you know, I usually would tell them how how it is, right? And I was very combatant with the with the people. As, but you know, I I don't I treat you I treat you good as long as you're not mistreating somebody else or if you are unfair to somebody else, and that's when I would I lose it, right? Uh, but as I've gotten older and, you know, I have to be around a bunch of people and corporate and all this, I, I realize that everybody is different and you have to talk to everybody different. It's you have to wear a bunch of masks, right? Uh, for mm -hmm. depending on the type of person that you are dealing with. Uh, some people don't like joking around. Some people like to joke around too hard. Uh, so you have to kind of split yourself in many ways uh, to to try to work with these people, you know, because we, some of us, I mean, I, I don't know, many, maybe a lot of us, we have some people that we have to work with on a daily, every day. And we have to, you know, you understand how this person is. So you have to kind of walk on eggshells sometimes, but you have to be able to find a solution to be able to communicate with them because you're doing your job, right? You're trying to work together. So I try to do what Big Brother does. You know, I, I separate people accordingly to, um, who I can joke with, who I can, you know, talk to, who I can depend on to get the job done and all that stuff. And uh, it's so far, not to lose my cool, have a lot of patience to 
talk to some of these people because some people just don't understand, man. You know what I mean? You can tell them five, ten times, mm-hmm. and they still kind of like they say they get it, but they don't get it. And some people just they they don't learn as fast as others, and they don't understand things like you know. It's, you have to explain it in a different way. So it's tough to have a it's tough to deal with your coworkers. You know what I mean? Especially when you know they just don't understand, but you know, yeah, I mean, that's basically what I do and just try to have a lot of patience, even though sometimes I'm like, damn, you know, this is, this is crazy how these people don't understand, but just got to keep myself under, you know, under control and uh, figure out a way I can, you know, talk to them. Mm-hmm. I'll share with you guys the best piece of advice I ever got from my 10th grade chemistry teacher, Reverend Dr. Kills. He's one of you had to say the Reverend and the doctor every time you address them. But uh, he he called me one day and stopped me and said, you know what your problem is? Your problem is you don't think you're smart. You think everybody else is stupid. And it took me a long time to like come to terms with that and realize what he was saying. I think sometimes we have to just embrace a little narcissism and recognize yourself as exceptional and then lower your standards for everybody else. I think we, we expect it. <laughs> Kind of get what we get and understand what we understand, and that's just see. And and I get it because I do. I know that's part of my issue. Because I expect people to think the same way I think, or the same way I work at work. You know what I mean? Especially if you if you got some time in, we shouldn't be having these type of conversations, man. You know your role. If you've been there for longer than. Five years, you know your role. If not, fuck you do. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, you just want like I. You just want you. You want to shake them. Like wake up. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't, I'm not here for this shit. I just want to knock on Will's office door. And be like, hey, you got a moment? <laughs> no, I'm just. Gonna, I'm just going to crack this door a little bit. <laughs> no, I. Yeah, sure. You gotta start looking at him like you know what I'm. I feel bad. I feel sorry for you. Something's yeah. not, right. and I don't know how to fix it. But I'm just gonna pity you for a little bit. Yeah. So would it be wrong for like, look, I'm gonna work with you a little bit more because I know how slow you are. So we're gonna. Yes, keep- will it would be. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna work with you. Man. I know. I know how slow you are. I Is care. it? Because you, you look like you're a little stupid. Like, yeah, yeah see, <laughs> see, yeah. It, it, it has the compassion behind it, you know. It's the delivery. Okay. It's got to have, it's got to be the delivery and how you say it. <laughs> Me and hey, Joe in the side man. office, like, yo, they got letters from the EEOC. <laughs> I didn't say he was stupid. I said he was acting stupid. It's different. Yeah, it's, it's two different things. It's two different things. That's funny. Uh, let's see. Joe, if you wrote a book, what would the name be? And what would it be about? Oh, I'm supposed to be ready for this, but, um, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be ready for this. Um, <laughs> didn't get the questions in advance. Joe. What are you talking about? <laughs> I only got them like three weeks ago. Um, <laughs> it, well, it would be, uh, the name of the book would be the mistake that sounds good and it would be about the mistakes that i've done in my life and how did i do to change them as i grew up as i got older you know what i mean and that's anything from work to life to any of that stuff right so that's what i would make it a book to where other people can relate and they can go oh, okay you know it's okay to be normal it's okay to be human and make mistakes And, um, I I think I said this a bunch of times, but the ending of the book would be, uh, how I would have a quote and it would say, uh, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. So it'd be like more of a memoir. Yeah. A a guy memoir with, you know, a little bit of guidance involved in there. And, you know, that people like to read stuff that kind of relates to it. Obviously, you know, not everybody's going to relate to this stuff, but you know, There'll be a lot, uh, plenty of people that, that can relate, right? And kind of give them the confidence. Because there's a lot of people that make mistakes and they get stuck there, man, you know, with whatever. And they're just, mm-hmm. they, don't, they can't move on from nothing. And sometimes you want to hear from somebody else. 
so you can move on. Okay. Big brother, when's your book coming out? I keep, <laughs> I keep asking you when your book coming out. Uh, a few things in the works actually. Um, but if I, if I had a book that dropped today, um, it would be titled all by the grace of God. And it would be about how all by the grace of God, I managed to accomplish some things I never thought I'd be able to accomplish, how I overcame self doubt, how I got out of, how I got out of my own way and how I actually held on to the tools that I got along the way and how I utilize them today. And then just to encourage people like, Hey, despite where you're starting at, you know, you can move forward and accomplish things that you didn't really realize that you could. So I believe that's what my book will be about. Okay. J dot. Yeah. I like how we're all trying to help people with these books, but, uh, I, I am writing a book and, uh, it started in, in rehab. It'd be titled, uh, define functional. Cause I feel like that was, my journey like into alcoholism it was like you know it started as i don't have a problem to maybe i have a problem so i yeah i do have a problem but i'm a functional alcoholic and then it was like i define functional like what's the what's the levels of, of functionality so yeah I, I do want to i'm writing a book just kind of detailed because i don't think i think when we see people at the end of their struggle with addiction or you know at the height of it um, we don't understand that that's not always where they were and that they were probably, you know, somebody that you knew, your coworker, your friend, a family member that you never would have thought would end up in these places. And there's a there's a progression and it's a it's a it's a pretty recognizable pattern that you can see um, in the things that happen in people's lives that have nothing to do with substances most of the time. Just random things that can happen to a person that can kind of push you in that direction. And if I could play the tape forward for somebody, you know, show them how the story ends, you know, if any of these things sound uh similar to stuff that you're dealing with like this could be the path that you're on and if i could just play that tape forward for you a little bit so you know where you're headed and maybe try to get help now uh, you know i think that'd be a worthwhile enterprise so that's that's what i'm working on define functional hopefully i'll be finished with it sometime so i started it like four years ago and uh yeah still working on it yeah. we'll get takes it. time it takes time you get you get it done brother that's that's dope though I think the title of my book would be Inside Out. And it is basically being, it'll be me just breaking down how I really see the things that I see. You know, breaking down situations and interacting with people. That that's what that would be my book. You know how sometimes you they say you on the outside looking in. That that that's that's my thing right now. I'm I'm on the outside looking in, or I'm on the inside looking out, and I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to get out of damn the matrix, y'all. Help me. <laughs> Try to go fund me or something. I don't know. Not a go fund me. Matrix. <laughs> yes. Yes. Always trying to make money. But just <laughs> let me just slide in real quick and just say, you know, I just really admire all three of you because each person's book was introspective and not only helping you but looking to help someone else so yeah i really i really admire you you, know, you guys thanks big brother Quick question. Okay. This, this random question i'm sorry i got random quick look i was banned from taking ashuganda today so i got a lot of wow. random shit because <laughs> we we, we, yeah. we don't want you to jump up and just run away from the table because you were losing it <laughs> Hey, uh, J Dot, with your new um, the, the new love interest. We're not gonna go into the whole thing, but how much has Iceman Slims help help you in this new journey of yours? It's interesting that you should ask that because this didn't pre rehearsed at all. I didn't, I had, I didn't see this bus coming at all. I just feel like I got hit by a freight train. Uh. No, it's, it's interesting to know because I've, I learned some things from that book about what I was doing in past relationships that I don't want to do in this one. You know, like, you know, part of the, the pimp strategy is you, is you give them all the, when you meet the girl, you're 
everything she ever wanted you to be. Mm -hmm. You separate, you become everything to them and then you separate them from everything else they have so that you're the only source of everything. And then you pull it back and then you watch a person do whatever you want them to do to try to get what they once had. And I didn't realize like, that's what I was doing in some of these old other relationships. Mm -hmm. Stay out of that trap this time. So I'm not a pimp, never been a pimp. Let me clarify. Let me clarify that real quick before you know, it's saying it comes off the wrong way. HR come knocking on my door. Wait, I was about, I was about to say what? Well, let me take back that I admire you from from hey. you at least. <laughs> hey, hey, big brother, if, 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 big brother, you was a, if you was a pimp, what would be your pimp name? I this would is random. Be a pimp. <laughs> I would be. I wouldn't. No, I respect women too much. Be a gigolo. <laughs> I'm going to drug test you, Will. <laughs> I'm going to drug test you. Random. It's all your fault, Will. It's all your fault. We had to keep going. Host got to be drug test now before we go in the air. I'm, uh, I'm drinking tea, so I'm good. I'm good. What kind yeah. of tea? It's pomegranate. It's uh, pomegranate lemonade tea. Antioxidants. See? Mm-hmm. Okay. With a little bit of extra stuff. Uh, <laughs> so we all have a love for movies here. So, Joe, what you watching, brother? I am watching uh, an old one, but a, a good one. And uh, it is The Secret Window with uh, Johnny Depp. And I can't remember the other people in it. But uh, it is a, it's kind of like a real life type thing. You know what I mean? Um, you feel like you got it under control, but you're living in a different place in your mind. And uh, you're writing your own book in your head. And, uh, you know, reality, you get lost in reality. And um, that's kind of what this, you know, when you push somebody that far that uh, you break them down internally, um, it's hard it's hard to know what that person can do, right? And what you what you can start thinking of and make it real, right? So it's it's a it's a mind boggling movie, but it's uh, but it's a good one. Hey Joe. I don't want to put you on the spot, but you you you're not really prepared for this, are you? I wasn't. Was that the one that I was supposed to talk about later? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you mean a Joe. new one now? Oh shit, my bad. Joe, hey guys, that was you want to be drug tested? I, I gotta be drug tested. Hold on, what what the hell? Did I skip something? Oh man, oh my bad. Wait, this is this is like when you in college when you all got a group project and some person is like. <laughs> didn't do it all day you this is your movie joe this is your movie joe what i that's what i said it was a secret window no anyway okay am i confused it is the secret window but he was like break it down further did you rewatch it again before we came on air well yeah i, had, I rewatched it a few days ago okay. okay so what what is it that you want to ask us about this movie joe? uh so I will uh, not. So then I'm on the right path then. So yeah. I wanted to ask big brother, start with big brother. If you were in that situation, would it be a different outcome? Yeah. So in the, uh, he, he tracks down his wife and finds her cheating at the hotel. And that causes a psychological break, which, um, most people know it's called a lot. Some of is referred to as detachment syndrome, where you come detach yourself from it, and you basically can can some people can develop like a I guess like a split personality, like he did. So, um, I think it would have been a different outcome if, if it would have been me, because I I'm more of a I don't need to track you down and chase you and catch you in the act. Once I have the proof that I need. I'd rather isolate you and back you in a corner where it's just you and me. But, you know, I can see where he, where someone can break, you know, she got the house, the man was up in the house and everything like that. 
And I just, and for me, I'm just not a jail person. I'm just not killing nobody. I'm not going to jail for you. And then you got to lie all this time. But I did like the movie. I did like the movie. I, ugh, I can't believe he buried those people in the backyard. Mm-hmm. So can I, can I um, interject on this? How do y'all know that she was the reason he had a mental breakdown? Maybe he already had a mental breakdown. Because we only getting the perspective of him, not the other way around. So he could have already he could have already had multiple personalities. He could have been schizo, and that could have been the reason why they didn't make it. This is just you know my 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 point of view of the movie. I mean, she did say she lost the baby, so that was a part that separated them. And I guess he was accused of, you know, plagiarism before. So all that could have came into play. But I guess, you know, that kind of like when that's the thing that brought it to a head, just seeing her. Gosh, he walked in. Well, not walked in. He kicked it, unlocked the door and saw them in bed together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that could have somebody crazy. I'm Which you. one? Though? I think that was the one that pushed him over the head because he obviously started inventing the personality when they showed the little flashback of yeah. them at yard sale or something. Mm-hmm. It didn't seem like they were going through a bad time then. So everything mm-hmm. was but he was already on that road to coming up with this whole new persona. But that might have just been the moment to just I think anytime a man has a mental break, there's a woman involved. I just I just think we need to admit that. <laughs> get but yeah, I like like that it has to like if you see the if you see them in the act and you lost your house you had to give her the house can you imagine you call her cheating and you got to write an alimony check that is crazy yeah I don't know, I don't know what state you're in <laughs> I thought you were going to do this deal but I, I take the pressure off of you I, I I'll take this one for you uh, what's up can we talk about the real theme of the movie that was a movie in my mind solely about white privilege just from the moment it started <laughs> walked into the motel thing went behind <laughs> and grabbed the keys I was like, you can do that well you thank you jay dot because i said the same thing i said and you didn't chase him he just ran in and got that key all right he just come out hey that's all you're gonna do is hey that's all that's all they, all, y- all y'all get is a hey from the door i'm not gonna go no further than that that was interesting to me and then uh and then you know big brother you said you you know you don't do jail he ain't in jail. The exactly. sheriff in the house and tell you, we know what you did. Mm-hmm. We're gonna figure it out at some point, but we know what you did. Just don't come to the don't come to the town no more. You can get your groceries over there like that. Mm. Can you imagine that playing out that way for any of us? Mm. Any oh of no, they, they will jail. hold you until they can't hold you no more. Yeah. It's, you know, it's funny because I feel like I'm alone on this. It's like I'm on an island. I feel like this is a movie about mental health. That's not being, um, he, he's not getting no help. He's got a mental health crisis going on. This guy has secluded himself in the woods in a cabin. That's what I said. I said, who is living up there by themselves in a cabin? It's not like, it's not like he was there, you know, for the spring season to write a book. He was living there. He ain't had mm-hmm. no choice. The wife got the house. It's a nice cabin, though. Yeah, we'll say this. Well, it, it, it was, but this guy obviously had multiple personalities. Well, I, yeah. I think that he was. I I honestly think that he was. Uh, that there was that mental breakdown, but I think he was already like that, and the mental breakdown mm-hmm. pushed him that way. Yeah, and, and and you think about all you know. Think about this. Just imagine during COVID. There were all those people that had to be locked inside the house that were scared to leave. That that kind of mm-hmm. just like, man, I wonder if people that already had some mental illness being locked up in a house, if that made them, uh, if that pushed them to the edge. Probably so. Isolation mm-hmm. can definitely do that to you. Mm-hmm. But oh, yeah. yeah. I, I will say this, though. I was a little bit worried for a second there. That Ted was going to save the day, and I was completely rooting <laughs> against Ted. I was going to be pissed off. Wait, something. was that the boyfriend? Like, if the boyfriend had survived yeah. that. Movie, I'd have been mad as hell. Yo, when well, he got hit in the face with that shovel, I was like, "You oh. Yeah. And and that but was wait, her. Fault. Wait, 
once again, she fucks something up for somebody that she say she loved. You see the man standing by the door waiting on him. You go on and scream so he can come through the door and get hit in the face with a shovel. She mm. did that too. I think this may be a movie more about how dangerous white women are. <laughs> and you know what? I was just about to say something, J. Dot. This is the is, is, is this is this what we're what it's really about? How dangerous white women are? <laughs> but wait, but wait, when she but wait, when she was running out the house. Why does she think to pick up her purse? Why are you grabbing this purse if the keys? <laughs> that shit was Gucci, man. It's probably like a thousand bucks. <laughs> she she was like, oh, the purse. It just... <laughs> I was like, you could have got to, you could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. But yeah, that's um, that's a good observation, Jay. Not. That... I'm just saying, let, let one of us kill four people, and they know we did it. And it's... <laughs> Come to the house to have a conversation with in in the woods, <laughs> killing in the woods. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, what else you got for us, uh, Joe? Anything else? Anything else that we need to talk about on that? Yeah, my last question is going to be for all of you all. And um, would you now just let, let's just say you did it? Where would you bury them, or where would you put them? <laughs> Would it be a garden? I mean, that find it kind of nasty, right? Because you you're growing carrots and shit, and you have to eat them. But where what would you do with the body? Bodies. I wanted to first joke, and I, I said, "Nah, I'm not." Gonna but sometimes I get worried about you, Joe. Because first you started this out with uh, this is about real life, and I was like, "Oh shit, is this what you did?" <laughs> hey, 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 hey! You guys are lucky that I didn't pick Mr. Brooks. You guys seen Mr. Brooks yet? That movie with yeah. It, it, yeah, see he was smart. Yeah. Had an mm-hmm. incinerator. Nobody would yeah. find anybody there. But anyway, where would you put them? Say where we would put the bodies. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I go if y'all want me to go. I don't. I don't. So, what I would do. All four bodies at one time, Joe, or individually? The individual. Well, the, the wife's got to have a different kind of one, you know, because she's a cheater. But the other ones are just collateral. It's a lot of thought going into this. I'm, I'm getting concerned. <laughs> <laughs> HR, what you doing? So, <laughs> what I would do is you get your pit. You make your pit in the ground. And you make that part of you make her body part of like the the, the fire. Get that going. Mm. Get it going. You know, you keep throwing the wood, you throw, you know, some, some maybe some some kerosene or gasoline on it. Get that fire going. Really hot. Mm. So you wood. And then on top of that is where you make your pit, where you have your pit, where you, you know, smoke you a, a pig or whatever. Because all those all those bones is in there. Mm. And once once the fire gets to a certain temperature, it's gonna burn everything up anyway. So and then with the ashes, then you can throw the ashes in your compost mm. or your garden. Yeah. If you have a compost. Pros and cons. And the and the fringe benefit of all of this <laughs> is that you're gonna get some great soil. <laughs> yeah. Or or <clears throat> what some people do is well, not that I know these people, what some people do is they get the ashes, mix it with water. You can make you a nice little putty. Mm. And you can, like, you know, make stuff with it. Mm. Yeah, with ashes. Yeah. I, I don't understand why HR is silent during this whole... <laughs> you know, uh, because I'm, I'm sending an email to Fiona, like, Fiona, pack and run. <laughs> I mean, because you, I mean, you can, like, make a nice writing utensil out of the, uh, out of the ashes. Move us on. Can you imagine... Could you imagine what evidence? Mm. Hmm? Make pencils out of them. You, you need me to sign your affidavit? Sure. And then you write it, and then they're, what they going to do? By Willie are uh, his and his alone. They do not reflect the views <laughs> of, <laughs> of Resident Big Brother and J-Dot. <laughs> I plead, I'm not incriminating myself on this. I show. plead the fifth, too. That's you, too. <laughs> There's a lot of speech in Texas, though. They okay, find so let's so let's make it let's let's make this for Big Brother and J Dot. Her, her, I, 
I I do one for J Dot. You do one for all right, Big Brangle. All right, we'll do that. Okay. So if I was J Dot, what I'll do is since I'm in Austin, Texas, I will find Pig Farm, mm. you know, twenty miles away, because we all know that pigs can uh, tear uh, a corpse up within minutes. Mm. That's true. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, Hannibal Lecter. It's kind of like that, yeah. I don't like that. I mean, but did it back in the early 1900s when they wanted to dispose of bodies. Hmm. It's, it's a lot of empty space in Texas, and wildfires happen all the time. So there you go. There's J dots. Hey, there we go. Yeah. All right, big go brother, ahead. you're up. Oh, I'm not answering that because I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't kill nobody. <laughs> I wouldn't kill nobody. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. I think Big Brother will incinerate them. And then he would mold them into some weights so he can work out with them. <laughs> he could. He could. You know, there's glycerin in Skittles. Mm. And skin has glycerin in it. So who's to say that he don't make them into some candy? Some gummies. Hey, he's eating some, some right now. He's eating. He is. I'm concerned for all of you. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Joe. Uh, finish this up so we can move on to uh, Big Brother. Um, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to say now. <laughs> what would you do? What would you do? Huh? What would Joe do? Oh, um, I, I think I'm here. I'm. I don't know if it's me or you guys getting that audio. It's cutting off. Um, mm-hmm. what I would do is um hmm i don't know i I wouldn't i wouldn't kill him okay yeah i wouldn't kill him i would i would torture them (laughs) yeah you know i would be like this is what you did to me and i would just keep them there until they were really sorry and they learned their lesson hey brother we need you you know what i mean really uh before we yeah. Well, wait, but wait, J. Dot. I love how he incriminated Will. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, me and Joe is already on somebody's list. So, I mean, yeah. at this point, so it's going up because the feds is listening there for sure. I was like, oh, yeah. grab the guy and by his, you know, hang him by, by the arms and like, I'll get a whip and whip him right in the nuts. Really? Yeah, I think you'll like be this, sorry. When this episode, when this episode come out, the comments gonna be like, "What was that?" <laughs> that that's you, that's the most creative you can get. Is you, you want to whip his nuts? Yeah, I, just whip it and I, you know, whip it and then just watch. You know, have her watch while I whip him, and you know, just feed him once in a while until they're you know until I'm like, okay, they're sorry. They're never gonna do this again. I mean, and I, I don't know. I don't know what would happen afterwards, but I, I, you know, they have to learn the lesson. They can't just you can't just put them in a the garden. See, I, I see you more as a waterboard. That would be good too. Yeah. Waterboard, or if you're going to prolong the torture, yeah. take out nails. Oh yeah, get the pliers and just pull out the nails every day. That's ten. That that's twenty days. Yeah. Or how there many times they how many times they cheat it and pull them out? Yeah. Oh, you, you, you could do like the old Chinese type culture where they do like the little cuts. Or you could just move on oh, and find no. somebody else. <laughs> that is true. That that you you could, yeah. This reminds me of a. You remember that Wu Tang Clan skit? Man, I fuck him. I, I fucking I sew his asshole up and just keep. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we get next is the health is uh, wet. Health is wealth. How the, hell people <laughs> the health is wetness. <laughs> hey, I'm thinking about some stuff right about that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh. All right. So I got I said, yeah, on, on a lighter note, folks, uh, let's talk about. <laughs> Hell, <laughs> there's no way to segue into this. No. Like, if you're not dead, <laughs> still alive and not trapped in somebody's basement, getting whipped on the nets. Let's talk about yeah. <laughs> so I had this come up recently um, because the question came up about my weight. I think my weight 
was shocking to you know someone i told them what i weigh I've, I've gotten down to like my running weight which for me i'm like i'm five nine according to traditional scales like somewhere in between 149 to like 170 it should be my weight range and i'm probably somewhere right there in the middle i'm like in a 150 155 range and that was shocking to a lot of people like that that is way too small uh for some people and and I guess what was brought up to me was that we're being judged as people of color by standards that don't necessarily apply to us. The same, you know, BMI and all that kind of stuff and, and weight ranges based on height don't necessarily apply to us because of our ethnicity. And so for me to be trying to fit into that weight range is uh, might not necessarily be healthy for me. How do you guys feel about that? Do you think some of these health standards and these, uh, when they give you what your weight should be or what your BMI should be or muscle density, bone density, all that kind of stuff. Are those things that should be on a different scale depending on, you know, your background or, or do you think we're all the same? It should be, but they don't care. Because even when you go to a doctor, the doctor don't treat you as that. Like when they, you know, grabbing you stuff for your blood pressure and, your, and cholesterol, they don't take an account to how different our diet should be. There's no people of color. So my, my answer is yes, it, 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 it should be, should be implied. Yeah, and I agree. I agree with that. Where it's like, just from your ancestors or, you know, just from the regions that our ancestors come from, whether any nationality, you know, different sections of the world, you know, depending on what the land would grow for them, that's that was their diet. And so if you try to put us all in one box, like Jada said, how are you 5'9 is supposed to be 140? Like that just seems unhealthy. So I do think as far as ethnic background and you know, genetics and DNA, you have to retool it for each, for each, um, for each um, race. Because like you said, some, who is it that eat the Medi Mediterranean diet over there? And, you know, I know a lot of Latin people are, you know, a lot of rice and stuff like that, grains and things like that. And then, you know, a lot, a lot of other um, races are more plant-based. So yeah, I definitely agree. You can't just put us all in one box and expect, hey, if you're this height, you need to be between this weight. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you get some of these like boxers or MMA fighters, you know, <clears throat> five nine, one forty five, you know, is that's not even featherweight. What is that like? Uh, that's lightweight. You know, yeah. cut super healthy. You know, I think I don't think anybody would consider them like unhealthy for their, their weight. And we're talking about across ethnicities, whether you, you got some, you know, you got black boxers at that weight, you got Pacquiao at that weight, you know, you, you got people all over the place at that weight that are functioning at a high level. So I, I do wonder like, why is it we hear five, nine, one forty, and we're like, Oh, that's, that's, that's almost off put. Yeah. I, I think those kinds of things, those tables are they really screw with people uh there's a lot of people that have that uh, have weight issues you know what i mean and they like all they constantly worry about is that and when you go into a place when when you have a, a chart system like that you know they where it's like well that's impossible and people start you know freaking out right they they feel bad about themselves and i feel like those charts that's all they do is they make you feel bad about yourself and you know they're not realistic like you know, like big brother, so they're not realistic at all. You know what I mean? Uh, height and weight and all this. And, you know, some people could be working their butts off, eating healthy, working out. And then they look at that chart and go, man, I'm still overweight. Like, how is that even possible? I feel great. My everything, all my tests are good. You know, why, why, why am I still overweight? And some people take that, man. Some people, you know, can go into having an eating disorder uh, they focus a lot on their health and uh, they start freaking out about everything. They don't want to eat normal stuff anymore. They just kind of want to starve themselves. I mean, I think things like that put people at a at a higher risk of being unhealthy, to be honest. 
I guess my question about the chart is who who is the standard? Is this is this a standard based off white people? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. <laughs> because you can't go across the board for everybody. You you can't. Exactly. Big brother, Big Brother already said, you know, based on where some people are from, what you ate it, it, it determines what what your diet was. You know, there was there was probably more plant eaters than there was meat eaters. I'm sure. Just think about how the Western culture, how much meat they produce or create a year for everybody across the country and in the world, because we actually, we actually ship a lot of our meat, our cattle out of the country. That's why we're so short meat. That's what they have to create it because we actually have, we actually ship our meat to other countries as far as the big, uh, Joe, you may know what I'm talking about, the, the, the big trade triangle that they have. Yeah. The food shot? Uh, no, it's, the it's reason, a, like how we, we, everybody, every country trades with every country. So, oh, okay, okay. So, you, I'm talking about that triangle, how we, we trade, you know, food and yeah. metal, and then we get back certain metals and certain uh, sources, yeah. you know. Yeah, but I, I, a lot of times when we look at the discussion about like uh, weight issues or uh, people being fat shamed and things like that, people don't think about the other side of the, the scale where, you know, I feel like I am at a pretty healthy weight. Um, and, you know, I feel very much judged these days uh, for mm -hmm. being, it's not like my diet isn't crap. I'm not, I eat what I want, you know, and. I'm probably not, I don't have a healthy diet by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, this is just my natural size. If I do any sort of, you know, exercise or anything like that, like this is where I'm going to stay. And uh, I'm catching a lot of flack from that. So. so my concern is where are you catching this flack from? My to make your community? You, you broke up. Say it one more time. My, my, my community, my people, my people. For my people. I didn't say I answer nothing about your weight. But uh <laughs> folks around me for somebody when they, they when they hear, you know, mm -hmm. one they're like, whoa, whoa, everything okay? Like, you all right? What's wrong? Something not something not right about that. So do do you isn't that just another one of those society push? Society's pushing on how we should, how much we should weigh what we should look like, our clothes should fit on us. Isn't yeah. that just part of, of what society is, is doing? I don't I don't think we think about it a lot of times with the weight issue in terms of people that are too small or people who are viewed as being too small. Mm -hmm. Nobody nobody would expect me to have anxiety about my weight. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting a lot of anxiety about my weight these days. But you're getting anxiety about your weight. I... I hear what you're saying. I don't think that you should let you should let what other people say affect affect your health. <clears throat> because the last thing we need is you starving yourself trying to get to some some quality. Or are they are they saying that you need to gain weight? Yeah, at this point, I'm like, yeah, I, I need to bulk up. I need to. Oh, so you need to bulk up. So you so you need to you need to hit the gym. And, and put some put some muscle weight on. I need to take some creatine and all that good stuff. Well, oh shit, that's, just eat you some peanut butter. <laughs> that's that's what my coach I, always said, eat you some peanut butter. When I was doing the half marathons and the marathons, like mm -hmm. I probably was down to maybe 145 then. Right. This is, and that's to me healthy. If I could run a marathon, like I don't feel like I'm underweight. And plus, uh, a lot, a lot of just, you know, not a lot of it, it, you know, side effects of social media and people thinking this is what you should be looking like. You should have the six pack. You should have the chest. You should have the biceps and things like that. So a lot of that 
comes from a lot of that social media side effect type thing of having to look like that. But like I, I personally feel if you are healthy, whether you are runner fit or you are just, you know, a little, you know, thicker, as long as you're healthy and you are good with it, it's about quieting that noise out because a lot of times people are just speaking their own insecurities on onto other people. Yep. And I'm, I'm and and that's coming from somebody who's overweight. So otherwise, I, I'm I'm jealous. I mean, you get to walk around with size twenty eight nigga boy jeans on and Who? shopping at shopping at you know J C Penney regular regular section. And I got to order my shit, you know, big and tall and stuff. And I got to worry about overpriced cotton. That's the same cotton that you got. It's pros I'm off my soapbox. I'm, I'm off my soapbox. That was it. I was just saying, you know, you know, it, it goes both ways. I, you know, it does. It does. It does. But I don't, I don't think from sitting here, I don't, you seem like you're pretty healthy, dude. Yeah. You, know, you drink a lot of teas. You you as active as you're going to get. <laughs> you should. Uh, <laughs> as, as you, as, as, as you, count. I'm, t- I'm telling you, my steps don't count because they haven't yeah, worked. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> hey man, hey, live live your life, man. Yeah. Live your life. That's that. Yeah. Live your life. Anybody got anything else on that before we move on? Nope. Any other concerns for um J Dot? No? Go? No. No, I'm good. No, good? I no, I'm good. I, I agree with everything that's said. We're good. So big brother, uh, how are you gonna sell us on um uh, this insurance that we don't need? <laughs> hey hey everyone if you have just a few minutes just like to talk about your insurance needs say no <laughs> no so so i just I, I just wanted us to shine a light on this uh about you know insurance you know not talking about health insurance we did that last episode but just talking about you know like you know, insurance you need if you, you know, when you pass away and just how important it is for to have it, because it seems as though a lot of people in black and brown communities, you know, they kind of let that fall to the wayside and always like, oh, I don't need it. I'm not thinking about that. No one's going to get rich off of me. So I just wanted us to shine a light on it just because we all have such individual voices of the importance of having it one for yourself to make sure that your family has enough to bury you, number one, because, you know, when you pass away, it's such a heavy grief. The last thing they want to do is have to figure out how they're going to get you buried. Then two, if you have people you want to take care of, you know, bereavement and stuff like that, you know, if they do work, doesn't last that long. So I just really thought it was important for us to shine a light on black and brown communities, you know, prioritizing having life insurance to take care of their families and to take care of their business. So the people they love can have the space to grieve and put their life back together, you know, at, you know, for that. So my question to the group is how important is it to you and how important do you feel as though it is to encourage people to make sure they have it and have enough to take care of what they what would need to be done if they, God forbid, you know, when they leave. So I'll I'll throw it to you first, Jada. Dot. Um it's something I'm just starting to get into now, you know. Uh as a dad, wanting to make sure, you know, if something were to happen to me that Chef Elise is taken care of. But I think from personal experience, I think if nothing, people need to have enough life insurance to handle their final expenses. You know, I don't think people realize how expensive burying a person is between the casket the plot you know the fees for just putting you in the ground like you can cripple your family and your loved ones financially if they have mm-hmm. to take that expense for you after you're gone so if, if you're going to do nothing else with life insurance if it's not about leaving something behind for people or any of that just have enough to be able to cover you know 
your burial, that service, all of that, because you you can really put your your people behind the eight ball. You know, if you just pass away unexpectedly, and now there's you know tens of tens of thousands of dollars that have to be shelled out to try to uh, send you home. So that's my thoughts on. It. Uh, so so Will, what about you? How important is it for you to have it? And how important do you think it is that black and brown communities start stepping up and making sure that they have it? It's very important. One of the things that me and the wife has talked about on multiple occasions is a living will. I don't know how many of you have a living will, especially J. Dot and Joe. When something happens, it's automatically going to cover some things for you. Now, n not the funeral expenses, but it's something in the case. You know, your, your, your assets, you know, stuff like it, your financial assets and stuff, it, it, it's taken care of. So that we, we talked about the living will. We, we, I always make sure every year during the enrollment at work that we do the insurance thing, you know, update, we update the insurance, you know. It's it's important because uh, in, in the in the people of color, I don't want to say black community, people of color, it's just something that we we're not educated on enough. Yeah, that's not that's not something that we know about. Hell, a lot of times I'm like, dude, I don't know what the shit means, but I I got it. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? I got it. I know I pay sixty dollars. You know, one hundred twenty every you know every month. Yeah, I got it. I don't know what all these underlining words mean, but yeah, but it, even if you don't understand what it all means, just make sure that you got it and make sure that you have someone that you trust that, that those assets, someone that can actually take care of the business. You know what I mean? Because one thing that we, in the black community and brown community is we always feel like people are after us for our money. Yep. You know, and in some cases we feel like, hell, I'm worth, I'm worth more dead than I am alive, which is sad that you feel like you have to put a price on your head just to have some type of value. But make sure that you have someone that you love and trust, that you know when you pass, they're going to make sure that everything is done the way that you want it done. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I felt as though this is important. What What about you, Joe? How How you feel about it? Yeah, it's, um, it's super important. I never really, before, I never really thought about it as much that the older I've gotten, um, I have everybody insured. I mean, every kid is insured, the, everything. So, uh, if anything was to happen to the kids, if, uh, even if they end up in the hospital, they have, uh, not just a regular coverage insurance, but they have the supplemental insurance where, you know, I get paid money kind of like Aflac. Um, so I have, mm -hmm. every, I pay a grip of money and that is the only, uh, it's worth it though. You know, it's a shitty but it's worth it uh, forking out that amount of money. But um, if something was to happen to me, uh, my house and everything's covered, paid, all of it. Um, so in the end, you know, it's, it's one of the most important things you can have. If your employer has it, get it. You know, because you just never know, man. I, I've uh, through where I work now. There's been a lot of people that uh, uh, their family members, one of them has passed away, or uh, somebody that we've worked with have passed away, or somebody's wife has passed away, and and they're trying to make, they're trying to trying to cover the funeral, trying to do GoFundMe, GoFundMe accounts, trying to do this, man. Uh, uh, not too long ago, there was this guy that lost his daughter, you know, a five year old daughter, and trying to get the guy that had you know, had nothing to, you know, had no money. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't want to be in that spot. If my company is offering me that opportunity, 
Uh, and I know a lot of companies don't do that, right? It just depends where you work. But uh, for instance, mine is like, yeah, I'll I'll insure whatever the hell I need to insure, and uh, I'll pay whatever I need to pay for it just in case. You just never know because we don't know the future. We don't know what's gonna happen. Um, anything can cripple us. You know what I mean? Anything. I mean, like again, back to the COVID thing. A lot of people lost everything, man. And just one little thing that can mess up with your life. And you're you're done for, man. If I didn't have insurance of anything, and something happens to me, my wife can't pay can can't pay the bills. You know what is she supposed to do? She has to sell the house to bury me. You know what I mean? She has to sell the cars to bury me. So it's uh, I'll put I'll put them in a in a in a in a bad spot. So yeah, you know, it's super important. Um, health, uh, life insurance, especially for yourself. Uh, at least if you can get it, I know it's sometimes it's unaffordable, but if, uh, if you can get it for at least yourself where something was to happen to you and you're the main provider, you can at least be able to secure your family, right? So they can have somewhere to stay at least, right? And all they have to work for is, you know, keep the lights on and get some food, right? But they don't have to worry about how I'm going to bury dad. You know, what the hell are we going to sell to bury dad or mom yeah. or the child? You know what I mean? So... So, yeah, you know, at first I was like, damn, I looked at my check. I was like, that's a lot of freaking money. But then I'm like, you know what? It's it's worth it because you just never know, man. And uh, like I said, things like that at work happen when you're like, damn, you know, good thing I have that shit because yeah. I would be in the same spot that guy was. So, so yeah, 100 percent super important. Yeah, that's why I wanted us to shine a light on people. Get you some health insurance. If your job doesn't offer it, find an affordable plan even if it's just enough to bury yourself because grief is worse enough but when you got to think about grief and money and how you're going to do something and bury them and how you're going to push forward and you know your job is only giving you three days to get it together you know so if nothing else and i'm glad we did this segment because i believe that someone's going to hear this and be like yo let me sign up for health insurance during this open enrollment period that's coming up or let me go out and get my own plan or let me get an additional plan so yeah black and brown people we got to get our business together handle our business keep our business together and before we move on i just want to throw in the one part make sure you keep updated you know who's going to get this money because you don't want someone who died as the beneficiary and then you die then the family's like now we can't get this money yeah. yeah and one thing that the people have to understand too is these fuckers out there man they are not going to wait for you everybody that you no. owe is going to go after you they don't care who died they want their money and yeah. you you can be grieving and you know my husband just passed away we don't give a shit where's the mortgage mm -hmm. oh yeah you know at the amex bill will come in a minute oh yeah well we're sorry to hear that but you know your minimum is due yeah and everything that your your spouse had you inherit so all those bills that you owed when you're married your husband or wife they have to pay for that shit yeah that so hopefully all these all of us hosts have it. So if you don't have it, make sure you get it. Yeah, I was want, I was wanted to say that that was one thing that I made sure with fees. Like, hey, look, I got this amount, this amount, that amount. So you have enough to do this and then have enough to pay this off. And then after that, you good. Yeah. You know, but I also wanna I also wanna make sure that when you do get the stuff. Be organized. Make sure yeah. they can, find, you know, find your work. Don't don't just throw it in a drawer or throw it somewhere. Be organized. Have a particular place where you put it at. Let someone know. Hey, here's the key. Here's this. It's here. Here, yada yada. Here's my doctor's. Here's this. That's one thing that I've been working with my mother because she's she's getting up there. Yeah one thing that i i don't want to go through through the whole um trying to grieving. find it the grieving is trying to find paperwork trying to do this i've even told her like hey look make sure you write down all your passwords and the places to like different companies that way i can call them let them know hey this person's deceased cut the service you know like cell phone service kept uh, cable service stuff like that it just it just keep coming in mm -hmm. 
and I'm glad you made that point before we moved on. Yeah, be able to put your hands on it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so this we're gonna wrap it up with this, y'all. This costs too much. So J Dot, what what's something that you buy regularly that you feel like costs too much? Life insurance. No. Uh... <laughs> hey, hey. You think about that. Uh, movies. And uh, I see, the, you know, when the new movies come out and they hit like Prime or something, and I'm like, man, I, you know, I want to buy that. But like renting a movie now is like $14, $15 or something like that. And you get it for two days or something like that. You know, to buy it is going to be like 25 That's not what DVDs used to cost. I'm confused. Yeah, I'm gonna go with movies. Movies, okay. Big brother, what about you? Soap, soap costs too much. I, you, I was like, see, what kind of soup? <laughs> I said soap, not soup. <laughs> go ahead. You thought I said soup? Yeah, I thought you said soup. It was like, damn, you, your life is really dependent on soup, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at J-Doc falling out. No, soap costs too much. You know, I like to use, you know, Dove soap. And when you buy the big pack, it's just like, oh my gosh, how does soap cost this much? And you think back to your parents, like, y'all had to buy soap for like a whole family? I'm only buying it for my house. Yeah, soap costs too much. It's like, it gets you, you know, all jokes, you know, kind of jokingly saying, it makes you want to like take a soap making class. So, so I'm gonna go well, soap. Episode is yeah. taking all kinds of stuff. Now when you're on Fight Club type stuff, this is just we were just talking about you didn't want to get involved. You didn't want to incriminate yourself. We were just talking about uh, <laughs> dispose of body. Make soap. Boom. Anyone Boom. who know anyone who knows me <laughs> knows I'm just gonna buy it. I'm not gonna make nothing. It's too much work. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's ahead. too much work. It's just too much work. Go I get ahead, like Joe. yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> gasoline. Gasoline costs way too much money, and uh, I think it's bullshit. You know what I mean? I, I want to drive my truck, pull my trailer up north and go camping, and, man, it cost me a freaking arm and a leg just to drive up there and pull the damn trailer. I was, and just to drive around the city. I mean, I have a – I mean, I have my work truck, but, like, when I have to – drive my own personal car i mean my car i had to buy a uh, uh a hybrid you know what i mean because freaking gas was through the roof and i used to work an hour away uh one way so uh yeah i think gas is ridiculous expensive you know the a wraps it's obvious that they have all the freaking oil and you know that's all right we have plenty of oil here too we don't have to pay six dollars five dollars a gallon Fuck, three dollars is good 250 i mean they're already screwing us with everything why can't they just give us gas? I mean, they're just gas. So you're going to just smirk it off, huh, HR? You're going to just... <laughs> because you know. Joe sound like an old old country man sitting on a porch just rambling. <laughs> yeah, I, I quote the A-Rub. <laughs> Joe's cut it out. Uh, <laughs> for me, I'm going to just I'm gonna ball it up on the one that costs the living. It's too much. I don't know. I can't tell you how many times I I sit on my back porch and like I'm not paying shit. This is right. I don't care. Let me get it. I don't care. I don't get it. What you gonna do? You gonna take everything else? Take it. What you gonna do? You gonna take the house? So, yeah. I need to you know what I mean. I, so come and get it. Come and get yeah, it. Just come and hey, yeah. dude. I'm done. Like I'm, I'm tired of paying. I'm just tired. I'm tired of paying for this shit, dude. Everything is expensive. It shouldn't cost us much to live. No, that's what I should have said. Yeah. <laughs> Single people taxes. You'd be like, who am I taking care of? Yeah. See, see, and you over stressing about soup. And you should I said be soap. <laughs> it should. <just> <laughs> <laughs> the first attacks. This is it, it's ridiculous, but that I, I'm just about, I'm gonna leave it as that because we we we'll never get out of here. But why do we have to be taxed all this? We tax for money. 
tax on gas, tax on food, tax at the end of the year, tax again. Like, isn't like just one tax? In the words enough? of Childish Gambino, this is America. I know. It's bullshit, man. <laughs> A lot of taxes. And, 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 and this is why everybody hates America. Yeah. This is why other everybody countries. Everybody does the haters. Not everybody, but it's a lot of them. Yeah. It's a lot of them. <laughs> Wouldn't you think that if you were paying tax the whole year on your food and everything that you get taxed on, that you wouldn't have to pay the tax anymore, but then you still have the federal tax where you get taxed all year, and then at the end of the year, they still tax you. That's some bullshit. Who the tell? Yo, your taxes get taxed. Yeah. You get your taxes back, they get taxed. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? How does your tax fund get taxed? I know. State, state, was a state and federal. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yep. Evidently, we in the wrong business, y'all. We need to yeah. be in the pimp. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we're going to just go on and shut it on down. Big Brother, let them know where they can find you at. I am the resident Big Brother. You can check me out on Big Brother Advice Podcast, available on all major platforms. Self-help, motivational encouragement. J-Dot. I'm the host of the What Is CWS Podcast. You can find me on all major streaming platforms, all streaming platforms, uh, for that matter. Uh, I drop episodes every Monday. Black Dad, Recovering Alcoholic, Washed Up Rapper. Just my life journey. Joe, the host of uh, Bold Talk by Joe. And uh, you can catch me anywhere you listen to your podcast, um, the Society and Culture podcast. Talk about all kinds of different little things here and there. Also on YouTube, I have some video there when I go on little expeditions and I like to share a little bit of my life with uh, with everybody. So, And I am Willie, co-host of the Thing About Us podcast that I host with my queen, Fiana, where we talk about relationships and anything else that we feel like talking about. You can find us on all streaming platforms. I'm going to be honest. We drop whenever the, whenever we feel like dropping. So we may drop Friday. It can be Sunday. We, yeah. So look, you wouldn't have the issue if you just follow and subscribe to our shows. You know, the little indicator that says new episode. By resident big brother what he new said episode by dws what is this white shit podcast <laughs> if you just follow and subscribe to our shows we might i have don't to- think this show is called that <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is but we're not gonna go there today. that's another episode yeah um uh, next time king of the queens We appreciate you turning in to the League of Kings podcast. Stay connected between episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Good Pods. For extra content, find us on YouTube at the League of Kings podcast and on TikTok at the League of Kings podcast. Until next time, keep exploring society and culture with us.